How are you doing, sir? Doing good. All right, I'm glad to have you here in the studio. We've uh, we've kicked off this thing. We've got everything. If I can check around, everything is actually in the red and it's rolling. So, welcome to the studio. What's on your mind today, my friend? Well, we had talked a lot about the whole idea that the new digital world has all this promise. It's the new industrial revolution. And then there are all these other concepts. You referred to some earlier today where we talked about the the whole idea that, well, artificial intelligence is coming. It's going to be to the level to where it takes away every human job. Humans will be left without jobs. And I think uh, there's a book by Harari that makes that point that ultimately uh, there'll be an elite that runs technology and that everyone else will just be sitting there and living off the government dole. That's sort of the some of the conventional wisdom that's out there. So ultimately, uh, is it is it true? I, and I'm asking your thoughts on this because you're the big technology guy and do all the the. Sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead. So so is it in fact true that uh, that that technology has achieved all this promise and uh, has has radically altered our life in a way that's increased our productivity. Well, now you you just sent me a loaded question over here, and um, and and I, I saw all of the different things that you just threw into that that question to make it more complicated because uh, did it, is is technology moving and changing our environment? Yes, are robots taking our jobs? Yes. As a matter of fact, if you go in the manufacturing um, warehouses these days, you don't see immigrants working. <laughs> you see robots yeah. uh, working. Yeah. Uh, maybe somebody had called them immigrant robots. Mm -hmm. They've come in <laughs> with the <laughs> sort of political climate there. They, they've come in, and um, that's what are the, where do the people go? So that's a, real, that's a serious problem. So in a way, the technology is actually canceling out some of our gains the progress and moving toward that is going to yeah. make life better yeah it is going to make life better it has already it's made it more complicated i'm listen i'm no expert at this i can only tell you from personal experience and things i've come come, come across but the uh technology can be a double-edged sword it can be a friend or foe yeah and i think the promises is is part of the problem now. Uh, so this is a part of your question. We're gonna rewind that question mm -hmm. uh, and look at it later, maybe. But it was a loaded. Like I said it was a loaded question. But there's a piece of it. That these are promises. Hey, your life's gonna be easier. That's right. Well, wait a second. How, what? And be specific about that. You're gonna have a flying car. Remember that one, right? I think we're going to talk more about that whole yeah. idea. Yeah. The title of an article, which I think you've said, and I think I've said at some point, "Where's my flying car?" Um, because I was promised that when this yeah. technology thing took off. Yeah, or and just or just the dri just the driverless car, which right now is fraught with all kinds of difficulties, and the big proponents of this have had to walk back their their projections because these driverless cars keep doing things, and this driverless technology keeps ultimately killing people, even though. Probably they're a lot safer than human beings driving the cars. You know, the the idea, I guess, is that, well, you know, uh, if if I get in a driverless car and then it wrecks, I don't have any control. So folks right. are, have that in the back of their mind, the whole I don't control it concept. Right. Yeah, and it, it will be um, a, a real process of change, and I think you're right. Some of the people uh, have – Elon Musk on some mind that have put these real short term goals where everybody's going to be right. in, a, in a car like that or something. Uh, and I think they do that on purpose. I think there's uh, some kind of strategy behind the crazy talk in a way. I, I, I do believe that. And that's something we can talk about more too on many subjects. But they, they, the proponents push it out beyond what is ca the manufacturing and technology is capable of to kind of get the word out and then they will move the goalpost back a little bit and they'll meet it in the in the future yeah. it seems to be a strategy at what ways. point is it over promising and it and where is that line between that and a good marketing hyperbole 
because we all right. say our product's the best product. That it's an interesting question, I think, and whether or not uh, that people will project this out in a marketing strategy yeah. and put a deadline out there that's way too soon for this to develop and us to get the information. However, you know, in the in the idea of driverless cars, you're talking about they have so much data now that they're that's coming back to them to make some decisions with, and I think in a way that's how. Um, technology works. It provides analytics. It provides data that you can then begin to measure and make changes in the product and make things better. Mm-hmm. So um, that I think is is good. But back to your loaded question. It yes, almost everything new comes out of the shoot. You got the early adopters. You've got. Uh, hype, you've got uh, trends, you've got people kind of reacting in different ways, good and bad. And then eventually, as progress moves moves along, things settle out, we get more accurate picture of what's happened. So unfortunately, Tom, you do not have a flying car that comes out of a suitcase, uh, like on the Jetsons. So I'm sorry about that. My worry is that the, the whole idea that that really what the business is in the United States is a software business. The majority yeah. of venture capitalism goes to three or four cities and right. uh, it goes yes. all into software. Ultimately, what is being produced in the United States because all the manufacturing is done overseas. Now, that may change as these other countries become more affluent and then we may end up with manufacturing back here. But, well, I'm not. I'm not sure all, but a lot. Yes, definitely. Well, look at Columbus. I mean, uh, right. the, what what fed Columbus for years is gone, and uh, essentially true. the jobs here are all in information. And as a college official, you know, I always touted that. But in the back of my mind, I always worry if there's not a finished product that we can take to market and sell. It's kind of hard to sell concepts, and yes. and it doesn't it doesn't create jobs for for everyone in other words those folks who are in the information software business are going to uh, have game in that that area so what happens to the rest of folks that's a harari idea that well they won't have anything to do there's there won't be anything for them to do yeah uh, there's a almost a digital divide if you will uh lots of divides we're yeah, having to do yeah. with people have and have nots kind of those kind of things you're right about the big cities having that technology and and sort of centered there i think not long ago there was some uh just a few months ago, I think it was Amazon who was trying to locate uh, their their new headquarters in, and uh, they didn't sh- choose a smaller uh, rural type setting, which they could have. Right. And they went to the big mega uh, metropolises that we have around, and and so as long as that continues, it's going to be, sl- uh, uh, you know perilous kind of journey because we're going to have that divide and if 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 some folks don't have an opportunity then we're going to have a real problem it should be that everybody has an opportunity but hey that's another concept too you know make your own way uh this is america pull yourself up by the bootstraps uh everybody's got to can be president or whatever those kind of things uh still are in people's minds so it may be a boomer idea but on the other hand um, how should technology go? Should people have access? Should people have uh, the opportunity to build? So you've got um, that going on with what you also just said, which was the um, the, the idea of uh, uh, being centered in one location and then another person uh, who's not in that location doesn't have the opportunities in that. Where does it go from there? That's a, that's kind of the question. How do we, uh, you know, let me just say this. Part of the issue has been that technology came on. Jeff Conklin talks about this. It came on before we were ready. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what to do with it. Here's this shiny new toy that's yeah. going to make everything wonderful, but we hadn't processed what it's like. How would it affect our lives? What do we really want out of technology? So these things move fast in that way. We're all of a sudden having to catch up, and there's a book coming out. Uh, forget the author's name, sorry, but uh, but the title is "The Future Is Faster Than You Think." Right at yeah. the end of this month, yeah. And and this guy described, the author describes um, 
just how we're not ready and what we need to do about that. I think that's going to be a big question. Well, it's sort of hard to predict how things are going to. So we're operating in a in a vacuum in a sense that we don't have the data to really understand what the consequences of all these these things that are happening now. And I think that's true throughout history. You know, if uh, Kurt Vonnegut was going to write this whole scenario, he would go back and say, well, if uh, technology takes uh, all the jobs, then in his story, I would think there would be something like a uh, a grassroots revolution and the government would have to tell technology to take a hike and we're going to go back to manufacturing and manipulate all that, you know. Right, I think. And, you know, the idea, too, and I, somebody said this just the other day, and it just kind of hit me like a, a brick, but two-thirds of Americans – have a high school education right only a third have beyond high school that doesn't prepare you to work on th- at these levels that require so much math and the kind of computer skills and all of the service skills that we have in this industry now and have in the world in our in our society certainly and others uh, you're not prepared for them, so you have to do that. There, you've talked about education a lot and trying to get out, and you did you did some work in in what is at CSU to try to reach out to those who typically don't have an opportunity to come yeah. to college and all that. That was a big that was a big issue and an important one. It just seems like all these boats have to rise at the same at the same time, and I don't know. Well, here's the other thing. What are we teaching in college? So if uh, if ultimately everything's going to go the technological direction, shouldn't uh, university higher ed be basically about coding and computer science and <laughs> and uh, technological? You, you know, certainly have the math and uh, science and that kind of thing. But uh, right, well, all these all these other things we teach in college, should we just sort of forget about that? Because really, ultimately. It doesn't prepare you either. And the same thing's true in public schools. We have this huge canon of things we teach because we have this American ethos where you're building the better citizen, the voter, and everything. But uh, okay. but now are we in a, a new age or there their new set of skills? For a while, the, the buzzword, everybody was studying critical thinking and soft skills. That was going to be the new thing. Right. But right. now I think we're off that, too, so I'm not sure <laughs> – sure where we're headed with it really that. is hard to know and but it just keeps moving yeah and and, and if this uh, the the technology sector moves faster than everything else all the other sectors then we may we, we haven't figured this out yet but i, I want to reframe it in some ways because i, I want to see this in a positive way that's i'm sorry that's my that's kind of my take on it most things but um yeah this is an exciting challenge so what are you going to do with it Mm -hmm. Um, you can frame it in different ways but listen we enjoy our phones and we're all you know connected to the grid and we're doing these things and we feel like we we're smarter now maybe or we have more access to information Uh, this dissemination of this conversation for example uh, we we're we're doing a lot of things now that that we've never been able to do before so I want to say this might be the opportunity if we can manage this right and not shoot ourselves in the foot uh, and make make something out of this revolution. And yes, it's going to be gains and you know backpedaling and moving forward, two steps forward, one step back, and all those kind of things. But I want to see this in a positive way. I, I'm 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 that kind of guy that we can work through problems, and we're in a country that worked through a lot of problems. So why not this? And uh, how do we make it better? Do you see it as an issue that uh, the the ubiquity of some of these technologies has, in a way, made us disconnect disconnected from each other? Yeah, I think yeah, well, yes. We've had we've had a similar conversation uh, around that question. We need more work with it. Uh, to try to answer and get a good answer with it because I think there are always losses with these gains. It's never a total uh, on the positive side, on the black side and the set of the red if you're looking at the counting. But the notion is that um, we do have to manufacture things. We have to make things. Yeah. 
somebody's got to do the plumbing and the electrical and the building and right. the, the, we making making things right yeah. so we have to have that in our world we have to have a balance with this uh service industry where everything's on a screen in front of us and you need to know software and programming and coding and things like that well that's just another piece of the puzzle it's not everything and it shouldn't be um, we've got to we've got to adapt some basic skills that we've talked about in here a lot, and that is um, uh, accommodation, uh, empathy, uh, being who you are, being authentic, appreciating other people, and all that. Those counseling things you hear me talk about occasionally, but that needs to be involved in this whole process, um, so that that. We we look at what our values are and those things that are of value to us, and we're gonna we can go ahead and project out to a point, at least to a certain extent, of where we want to be. We got some vital questions to answer before we get to that, but I think we need to pose that question: What where do we want to go with all this? Where do we want to end up? It's kind of like retirement. That's something you and I both can talk about. Yeah. But what you want retirement to be? Well retirement is ongoing i don't i don't think we've ever really intentionally asked those questions as you say the future is uh whatever the title of the book is the future is here now yeah the future is faster faster than than you think think, whatever (laughs) i don't know about that so here's here's the present it's thanksgiving all the family comes over they're the grandchildren there's mom and dad around the table there's the grandparents around the table the grandchildren all have their phones or i or pads out right and they're watching videos right the parents are checking their email and uh checking to see if uh <laughs> we're going to put the next picture from thanksgiving up on on facebook and then there's grandpa and grandma and they're uh checking their instagram accounts oh or Twitter all right accounts. some pretty progressive grandpas and well that i think but that's true that, that that's so what's happened really to thanksgiving what's happened to family time and that kind of thing and, and you feel like hey i'm going to text you past the cranberry sauce well it goes to the I mean, point <laughs> of what we talked about 20 years ago when uh, people would be in the next office and email you rather than right. talk through the door that was one of uh, one of our friends used to say just Come in and tell Just me. Go, don't, don't email that's me. Right. But the 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 other thing is this. So, uh, you know, all the data that we have collected yes. about instruction and, and education shows right. that the efficacy of digital instruction, online instruction, which is where it was all headed about the time I retired. Right, it, right, right. It was hard to teach in person. You couldn't right. find a class to teach them. Nobody wanted to take an in-person class. So – all the data was showing, hey, it's as effective or more effective. But I'm always suspicious of the whole data thing. As a as an educator from public schools, I always wanted to ask, well, what what data are we collecting, and is right. it really telling us what we need to know to make for a better life? And ha- and how does it how is it interpreted? That's yeah. a big point of it. So there's data, yeah. but then what do you do with it? What do you make of that and how you apply it in the situation? Well, and, and the ironic thing was I was an early adopter of online instruction. I was one of the very early ones at Columbus yeah. State. And I it, actually have a video of you years ago on yeah. a green screen uh, in the old studio yeah. uh, where you were talking about that. And I saw that not long ago. So well, we have some archives here that can track back. And when you say, I did that, hey, I've got evidence you did that, by the way. So yeah, so, cool. so I was an early adopter. I thought this stuff was cool. It was fun to work with. I love building websites and all that stuff. But as I did that, I always saw that as a as a side of what my real job was, which was to create new streams of knowledge as a uh, as a researcher and to to go into the classroom and connect with students and and do that and and help people be better leaders. And now right. I wonder, are we going to look back and say, you know, we really dropped the ball, but all the data we were collecting told us this was all good, but you know maybe we didn't collect the right data because now we have all these unanticipated consequences. People disconnected. People, uh, two poles look at things politically. Now that you have everything out there on the internet, 
people uh, look at the news and they go to the sites that reinforces what they already think. Oh, and that's there's right. no listening to anybody else. So, so see, either see the show on confirmation bias. Just well, a plug there. Oh, there you go. Well, I was watching the whole <laughs> the whole latest impeachment news and all that. And uh, depending on which channel you that's watch, that's exactly right. Yeah. Nancy yeah. Pelosi is either a great American hero <laughs> or the worst, or the worst person worst, ever. To, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, how does this work? And and uh, there's that now underlying that I think is a real problem too, and I mm-hmm. mean to kind of yeah. You, yeah. you'd go to that yeah. point as you need, but I, I it made me think that we've got these corporations like you said that they're in these big cities. That's where the tech giants are: yeah. Silicon Valley, uh, New York, all those places that um, are making themselves wealthy. Right. Okay. Sure. That's what we're doing. We're in this. Uh, Which is the American way. Right? That is the American right. way, and yeah. we're going to get rich. And uh, Jeff yeah. Bezos, you know, we saw have that picture somewhere around the studio where he's sitting at a small desk, yeah. and a and a big uh, CRT monitor uh, with the with a paper. Uh, uh, banner up that says uh, Amazon dot com. Right. Uh, well, now, <laughs> um, so that's a problem when we. Don't understand mm-hmm. some of the humanity right. that is that should underlie this because otherwise it comes across as greed, and I'm I'm a little concerned about that being um, sort of our goal in the end because um, that's not a really good goal from my point of view when we talk about that. But the idea that you can come along and make and be prosperous and make something of yourself and make a contribution to the world and even have a lot of money. That's fine. Wait a minute. It's going up now. It, it's, 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 uh, it's just exploding to the point that it's almost, it's impossible for people to get ahead. And it's really, really easy for others to get ahead. And there's something wrong with that system. I'm not sure how to articulate that very well. And, and really, understand i'm not i'm not down on technology i'm just wondering if we're utilizing technology to meet the needs of humanity that exist right now and right. to to that point here's here's you know the the things i i constantly sort of think about as existential threats one is the proliferation of of uh, we, weapons of mass destruction which is a technological issue how how do we how do we come to terms with that? But the other one, even more, and seem, seemingly even more pressing, is the whole idea of global climate change. And could we, as a, as a global society, take a look at how do we utilize science and technology to replace the present technologies that essentially uh, global climate Global climate change is being caused by you know the whole idea of uh, of creating energy you know and right. you need more and more energy and right. you have more and more people and and that's been good to us but now uh, how do we how do we transform those things into new kinds of energy producing entities that don't impact the the climate so drastically right and that those could create jobs too so. So I think yeah. that's uh, that may be a potentially a goal for us. I wish that uh, that governments would promote those kinds of things instead of argue about whether it's happening. You know, right? It almost seems like yeah. some of this is being talked about on the sidelines. But but for me, it, that's the key point. The thing you just said is that we need to make that direction change with uh, technology that can capture carbon out of the uh, atmosphere right. and make that uh, – well, w- we talked about solar energy and right. solar power. I mean, Peggy, uh, my wife wants uh, our house to be solar run. Yeah. She wants those panels up and right. and all those things. She's talked about it for a long time, so it's other uh, people. So I think really – that there's an opportunity, and it may just be a generational issue. That maybe our generation, as we come along, we did a lot of good things, but this net, we need to hand this off to people and the new technologies. And if you, and I'm taking a developmental look here, and maybe a hopeful one too. But 
the idea that uh, these this new innovation, this new uh, approach, not just to getting a chip that's faster and can uh, compute faster, but that actually is aimed at something that we really need to address. And if that happens, we may not see it, but it's going to be a good thing, maybe. Do you know, maybe it's a new perspective for me, too, because for so year, so many years I was tied up with uh, uh, doing administrative work and earning a living and raising kids and that kind of thing. What you have to and, do, right? And I didn't really, in a lot of ways, see the big picture. I saw a a picture as it related to the entities where I was working right. and uh, tried to address the issues that I saw coming down the pike, and I tried to be futures oriented too. Yeah. But it's interesting to me that the the whole that since I've retired, I see the world in an entirely different way. I see it more in the in the sense of, well, what will be happening in fifty years? Now I right. won't be here. Right. So I'm not sure why that's happened, but I've become this sort of neo progressive that uh that says, hey, we, 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 we don't have our eye on the ball that's coming at us down the plate. Now, it yeah. may be that the uh, future is coming faster than we think, but maybe the future's not what we think. Right. In other words, we may be distracted by all the play purties and coolie deals, <laughs> and we may be missing the fact Guilty. that, that uh, you know, uh, Venice is underwater. I right. mean, Venice is currently underwater, and it's almost like we go – well, yeah, that's terrible for them. But what happens when it's Miami? Which, incidentally, by the way, some of the streets are flooding they, there. They too, are right flooding right? in Miami, and and my my thought is ultimately on on that deal. I wrote an article uh, years ago, and it was about technology. It was about what a Wechselblatt disaster is. Okay, the idea is that you develop a technology, and the very technology you develop makes the problem you have worse. Oh. The the example I used, there were a lot of examples, but the example I used was Katrina, mm -hmm. the very very uh, technologies that were supposed to keep the water out right. kept the water in, right? So right. it created a Wechselblatt disaster. Well, now, you know, my, I, my worry is, uh, you know, certainly over the next 20, 30 years, yeah, we can keep water out of New Orleans, but what happens when the ocean continues to rise? Right. And, uh, and and that kind of thing, and whether it's whether it is that uh, coal burning industries or uh, cars or whatever are creating this or not, the point is it's happening. So what are we going to do about it? And that discussion, rather than, uh, needs to be more more goals oriented. I guess that's no, the neo progressive in me. No, I, I like it, and I like what you said too, because um, if this with uh, you know, when I was in graduate school, I had to take a course, and I didn't know uh, much about it, but it was called adult development. Yeah. And uh, this was psychology courses and counseling and that kind of thing. But the, the idea was, hey, first of all, there is adult development. You just don't get to twenty age 21, and then you stop, and you got the rest of your life. So we're no. not washed up. No, we're not. Saying. We're not. Definitely not. And the idea, too, I think, is that uh, we're constantly – and and they're talking about stages, and I wanted to mention this. This is something you said that when you retired, now you can begin to see. Well, it's almost in a way unfortunate that we have to wait till after the job cycle and we're in retirement to yeah. look at the whole of the picture that we are involved in. And I'm hoping with this, again, hope, but – the intellectual and the digital revolution that we're in is going to inform people earlier in yeah. that development so that they make better choices both individually and both as companies and corporations to be able to address some of these things and see what's important. You know, money is one thing. We all want to make money. But, hey, there's some things that are more important than that, sorry to say. Well, certainly that promise is there. You know, this whole idea of uh – of looking for the ball coming out of the pitcher's hand, you yep. know this whole whole kind of metaphor I was I was working around. I think in uh, if I had the last twenty years to do over again, right? Oh I, boy, that's a big one right there. I would spend a, a good bit more time, it, especially in a leadership role, leading people to have the discussion: what should we be doing rather than 
uh, the the discussion Here's, being about well, what is uh, University of Georgia doing? What is or what is this mandate that we've been handed down yeah. to fulfill and without any really dis, really a discussion about it at all? Yeah, because really, ultimately, yeah, all these things are happening around us, but we almost are looking to the past to drive what we're doing. We we want to be today's. Let's say uh, in education, we want to be today's uh, Harvard uh, mm-hmm. or the Southern Harvard. Well, the ultimate question is, what's coming down the pike? What's coming out of the pitcher's hand? What should I swing at? What shouldn't I swing at? Right. And Good I don't baseball think, yeah, analogy I, there. I, I don't think as a leader I did that enough. I think I, what I did more was say, what problems are we having now? Okay, yeah, yeah, we pulled the people together. We threw things on the table. We got a lot of feedback, but it was about – it was almost like uh, we were addressing what's right there in front of us and not looking to the future, whereas That's ultimately the role of leadership should be to what's be a little down? more – yeah, a little more futures oriented. So. I, I, I kind of think that we're, we find ourselves where we're working in a corporation or university, as we did, and other kinds of organizations that you sort of encapsulated in that environment. You're breathing oh, the good air. Point. Yeah. You're seeing it from that perspective, yeah. and uh, you sort of have some blinders on to what's going out there because you've got to take care of your own and so to speak you've got a job to do your boss is asking you to do these tasks you're doing that task you're not saying hey is this fit into my uh, philosophy of what we should be doing in this uh, environment no you don't have that luxury you you're you're in that corral uh, and that's what you have to work with so the big questions at that point don't seem to be very important to the people around you or the organization that you're in well and you're in interesting you're in a routine so you know this is year five of your credit and it's comfortable yeah routines are comfortable what's and and you're in year five let's say and it's uh, of your accreditation. Well, you know you got to start working on that report. <laughs> then you also know you have a budget. Don't to, remind me. And you're going yeah. going to send in the budget that you essentially sent in last year, tweaked for whether you have more or less money coming down the pike projected. Right. Yeah. So you you know you're going to do that. You know you're going to have your regular monthly meetings, and you need to prepare for that so you don't look silly or unprepared. And you're doing all that. Right. But it's you not can. doing what you want to be doing, which is saying, okay, gang, here's here's the future, and it's coming faster than you think. Let's talk about what it might look like and come up with some uh, alternatives that we might try to see if this takes us in the right direction. And that's really – I think uh, – I'm working with uh, – uh, Bridget Markwood, who I worked with on some projects at Columbus State University, we're, and we're talking uh, a lot about – what does education need to be down the road? And uh, a lot of what we've come up with is what we're doing is is really what we've been doing. And we've been doing it for years right. and years and years. And we don't really – we don't even have defined what we think education should be doing. You know? Right. So right. we just keep doing what we're Well, we you're on doing. that treadmill and you're starting to run, right. and that's what you do, and that's what you know. And yeah. so you get back on that treadmill, keep keep rolling with what you've done before, and you're going to do that yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, that's that's a that's a challenge. But I, I have to say one thing I like about you, uh, what you've done in the past uh, that was significant for me as a faculty member when you were department chair, and you had us read books and come into a faculty meeting instead of going over uh, various technologies or some, some, something we had to do for the, for the chancellor or something. But, we, <laughs> but uh, that we had to think. We had to read, yeah. think, and then discuss things. And I always thought that was great when you when Went you over like that. a lead balloon with some folks. Though. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, like, they, what? Didn't, they, they should have rethought I, that. because It was actually, like it was I great. finished graduate school. What is, it, what is this about? And, hey, uh, no more know, learning here. What are you talking right, about? Right, yeah. I'll, no. I'll bring the book in to the meeting and, to, and show it. But I, yeah. you know, I don't know. If well, it, I have to admit, I had a lot of those little sticky notes sticking out of the page so you would know that I've actually looked at the book. But, but – but uh, for for me, we you're right. We don't have uh, in those systems. There's not a time, and maybe that's different in some corporations and some uh, settings where 
you do have the time to think about the big issues. I like to think that they're doing that at these Google and Amazon and all these big places. They're actually thinking about the impact, in particular like Facebook now, you know, the whole political thing where yeah, he the, got, the Zuckerberg got really burned by some he, things that had happened. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. There's some real yeah. concerns here because yeah. one that came, uh, came up for, for me was this idea of free speech, which we don't – we want to have free speech, but what about paid speech? You know, yeah. I mean, free and yeah. paid. Yeah. That's the difference between that. And they're not really seeing that difference right now in Facebook. And that's why I think all these hackers who are coming in and these millions of accounts that right. come f- with the right. dot R-U on the back of it uh, – or, and and are on the money that's being moved can influence people in ways that is a, really a, a, it's against their own best interest in some situations. So that that's maybe for a discussion for another day. We'll have to do the whole Facebook discussion maybe because there's a lot there. But the point being that it connects to this idea of us not really – thinking through, planning, setting the goals, and is this good for us, and how will it affect the future? And it's just a shame that it has to take two old retired guys to come in and talk about this. When, wouldn't, we, wouldn't it be better if we did that in our 30s? Uh, no, nah, man. It's, a we're, job? Come we're, on. we're old guys. It's our job now. <laughs> to, to sit in a Burger King and talk about how it could be better, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's actually yeah. true. If you look at the uh, adult development literature, that's exactly w- w- where we're at. We're, we're at this stage of life where we're kind of looking at our accomplishments and what we would have done better and changed things. And I think that's that that's actually it's part of the series of life those stages that we go through well you talked about being optimistic and i and and i'm an optimist too and i i do see a uh, a lot of evidence that that the people in the uh, in the silicon sector are really trying to utilize some of those resources to to really address some some of these issues we're talking about uh, at the same time, you know, you realize, well, we're, we're a capitalist economy, and yes, really are. you got to ultimately be about making money and earning a living, too. So somewhere in, in, in the middle is a, is a balance. But yeah, ultimately, it may not have the luxury at those early stages to do that because we're, we're trying to make a living and provide for the family. But it, it takes a lot of creativity to say, okay, well, how can we be uh, aware – of where we are globally and use that awareness to create jobs and create money and to create uh to create a good economy for everybody and and right. that's a that's a balance because like anyone else i think those guys are having a tendency to look at well what's worked before y- you right. know when right. when somebody says we don't need to reinvent the wheel i've heard that my whole oh, life i've said it probably you know times. my my question is why don't we need to reinvent the wheel isn't wheel. there something better do we ne- actually need to touch the ground you know <laughs> so uh you, you know i think there's uh there's room for creativity there, i like right? it i like yeah. it yeah, yeah. We, uh, watch too many star wars movies around here that's right like it. that's so, right uh, yeah those those uh those little gliders are always above the ground right yeah well this is this has been interesting i i um I really think that what what happens in the processing of our conversation that happens for me is that um, I, I've got a couple ideas I want to kind of get out there a little bit, but I'm also very intensely listening to what you have to say so that this conversation begins to kind of go back and forth, and it almost in a way – pushes us toward a, a something we haven't thought about right. or something new. Yeah. So the discussions are valuable in that way, and I I, um, I do appreciate that, and I just want to make a process comment about that. But but uh, for the most part, um, w- w- how much influence can we have on these things? Yeah. We can certainly have control and influence on our lives and our immediate uh, um, situation but not always affect and not, uh, affecting the bigger bigger picture and that's right. a, that's one of Dr. Dan Rose's ideas that yeah we can do our little part but we need this bigger collective to to make some changes for that so well my response was we have to start somewhere 
Mm-hmm. So that's uh, true. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. kind of get that going. All right, sir. Well, what else is going on? Final words on this idea of technology and um, you know, are we making good decisions for ourselves and the promises of technology that didn't quite come to pass. Your your suitcase flying car. Yeah. I'm sorry. You well, didn't get that. Well, I think I think ultimately it's not that the promise hadn't come to pass. It's that we're not there yet, but right. that, that at least we're having these discussions and, and these thoughts. And someone is going to make some huge discovery that's going to create that that Thomas Kuhn leap, you know, right. the paradigm shift, the, the jump in. Uh, we all know uh, when we look at statistics, we see curves and then we see leaps. And that's uh, right. that's a common phenomenon. We don't talk about it a lot. We act as if there's a curving trajectory always up, but typically it's uh, oh it spikes up. It's and, yeah, there yeah, there are spikes it, up it. and down, and there are plateaus, but then there are sudden leaps. I think that's going to happen. And you know, we have a tendency also to look back at the past, and, and we're able to, in retrospect, yes, see always. those leaps. And we were a part of those, but we're not seeing what's happening now. So it's uh, you know that's just human nature. No, right? but I mean that's a, that's a yeah. that's a big point because just look at how much information we have at our disposal on our phones uh, and every, it, bombarded with information yeah. and uh, uh, content that we're not able to process so much. And we've had this discussion as well. I need to get Jeff Conklin in here for this one. But but the idea is that. It's creep in a way. This information availability now that we have from all of these different sources are, are uh, we're just accepting. But if you look back 10, 15, 20 years ago, we didn't have any of this available right. to us. Now, if something happens around the globe, we know about it. Right. And the ability to, to evaluate it, to talk about it, to share it to make some sense out of it. We've never had that before This as we have now. And that's uh, going to continue to move, and I think it's going to force us to make those choices that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, and Faulkner talked about this years and years ago uh, about uh, people were tended to be pessimistic at the time of his uh, Nobel speech with the with the proliferation of nuclear weapons and the the two world wars and all those things, and 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 Faulkner said, you know, he he really. Uh, was sort of optimistic about where where the future would go because he believed in the human spirit and uh, right. you know it's it's funny a lot of times folks see his work as uh, sort of uh, you know not dark but but mm-hmm. depressing sometimes because right. he 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 was really cognizant of the human condition right but at at the same time there's always that room for redemption so uh, I, I sort of uh, a fan of the Faulknerian point of view on all that. So that, I guess that would be my final word on where we were today. All right, so we went with Faulkner. We, we started out with Derek Thompson talking about uh, Where's My Flying Car. Where's My Flying Car, good article. Atlantic, great article. Very and, thought-provoking. Don't and, know if I'd drink all the Kool-Aid. There we uh, go. We, good uh, stuff, not, yeah. You're good. I'm glad you're not drinking all that Kool-Aid. A couple sips here and there, I think we'll be fine yeah. with it. Well, Tom, uh, it's been a pleasure, and... Uh, Tell you what, we'll do this again and I'll see you next time. See you next time, Mike.